Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy, and I'm going to talk about our new plugin, 3D Invigorator. We'll go over some of the basics of working in 3D, and also talk about setting up Invigorator's workspace. In part two of this tutorial, we'll also go over the types of objects that are available to you in 3D Invigorator, and how to manipulate those, and make changes to them, and basically set everything up. So let's get rolling. Let's start off by applying 3D Invigorator to a new layer. If you're using Photoshop CS3 or CS4, we recommend applying Invigorator as a smart filter. You do this by turning our layer here into a smart object. You can select your layer, like we have here, and go up to the layer menu, and go to Smart Objects, and go to Convert to Smart Object. Now when we apply 3D Invigorator, it'll show up as a smart filter. It's under the Zaxworks submenu, and we'll apply 3D Invigorator. When we first apply Invigorator, you'll see it asks you what you want to do. Do you want to create 3D text, import an Illustrator file to use as the basis for a 3D shape, or create a 3D primitive? In this part of the tutorial, we're going to start off talking about 3D text, and in part two, we'll really get into the details about all these different types of objects. So right now, we're going to select Create 3D Text. It's going to bring up your normal text entry dialog, and we can go ahead and select our font, and then go ahead and type in the text that we want to use. And I'm going to type in 3D and click on OK. And this brings up the 3D Invigorator user interface. Our text is now placed in 3D space. And Invigorator gives you lots of ways of viewing your 3D scene and modifying the 3D objects within it. So let's take a look at the top toolbar. The first section shows three buttons, one for the camera, one for the lights, and one for the 3D objects. The second section indicates what you can do with whatever you have selected over here. For example, moving things around or rotating them. And then the third section over here just gives you a selection tool and a magnifying glass. But let's start off with the camera, which we have selected right here. And so let's see how the tools in the second section help you move the camera around. So the first button is called the camera tumble button or orbit tool. Imagine the moon orbiting the earth and you get an idea of what this does or how it moves the camera. The camera just rotates around your 3D object much like the moon rotates around the earth. Try to imagine your camera as part of a trackball that's just rotating around the 3D text. Scrubbing the mouse up and down and sideways controls the position of the camera, much like you are moving that trackball. The second button in, the, in this section is the camera roll tool, essentially tilting the camera one way or the other to get kind of a crazy angled view of your object. The third button is the camera track tool, and really this is just a fancy television way of saying it's the move tool. You can move the camera up and down along the y-axis, left and right along the x-axis. And so you can move the camera a lot like you could you know, move a picture in Photoshop, just kind of up and down and sideways. And so that's a pretty useful tool. And the last button is the camera dolly tool. This allows you to move along the z-axis, moving the camera closer or farther away from the object. This works kind of the same way as the zoom tool, so this is a little bit smoother and a little bit uh, allows you a little bit more subtle movements than the magnifying glass does. But by moving the camera closer, we also affect how some of the other control moves. If I kind of zoom right in here and then grab the camera tumble or orbit tool, you'll see that I'm now close in on the object and I'm actually rotating around and through the object. Whereas if I back off a little bit, the orbit tool will just simply orbit around. 
So that covers it for the camera controls. Let's take a quick look at the light control. If I select my light mode on the first section, you'll see that pretty much everything gets turned off on the second section except for the light tumble. And what this allows me to do is move my light around. Again, much like the camera, it sort of acts like it's on a trackball and just kind of rotates around and orbits around the 3D objects. One thing to notice is that this is synced up with the light editor, which we'll go into more detail in a separate tutorial. But as I move this around, you can see that my light in the light editor is also moving around. And indeed, I can come into the light editor and grab my light and have the same effect. So this light editor and the light mode here in the main UI um, operate as basically the same thing. So now we'll move on to the 3D object controls. So I can switch over to object mode in the first section. And you'll see all the buttons in the second section now become activated. And this is where the pointer tool really starts to come in handy. If we select the pointer tool, we can now select either nothing or just one of the characters, or we can select all the characters. But in this case, we're just going to select the D here. And let's take a look at how the controls in the second section affect my character. So I can grab the tumble tool here. If I move my mouse up and down or sideways, I can just kind of rotate my 3D character around any way that I want or any object that I have selected. And so it's pretty easy to kind of rotate things around and give each character its kind of own different rotation. And I can even switch back to my camera mode and kind of look at how that got affected. And so let's go back to selecting my D. We can also select the object track tool. And the object tracking tool just basically allows you to move the object around, up or down, right or left in 3D space. Now one thing to notice here is you'll see that the object is actually kind of moving back in 3D space. It's not actually moving just right or left. If I turn off drag using objects axes, my object track tool will actually now move this back and forth, up and down, relative to my camera, to the way that I'm actually viewing it. So you can see this is a little bit more natural way of moving objects around. It's very much like kind of moving an object in Photoshop. As you move up or down, so does your object. And that's what happens here. And the next tool is the object dolly tool. And this allows you to move the object back and forth in Z space. Right now I'm moving it away from the camera. And if I reverse that direction, I'm going to start moving it towards the camera. So this is the way you would move a character in 3D space. So if you want to position the character behind the other one, this is the first step that we would have to do. We'd have to move it back in Z space and then grab our move tool and scoot it over. And then the last button is our scale tool. So if we want to scale up one of these characters, we just grab the scale and just start stretching around. And of course, we can use our shift key to constrain it much like we do in Photoshop. It'll keep the proportions correct. So we don't have a squashed or stretched out character unless we want one. So as you make all these adjustments, it's useful to note that if we go to the info se section of our objects palette, all these changes are reflected there. So that's the basics of 3D Invigorator's 3D environment. In the next tutorial, we'll go in depth into the different types of objects, the object palette, and the materials. You can also check out the Digital Anarchy website for more advanced tutorials on 3D Invigorator, along with demo filters and tutorials on all of our other products. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and thanks for joining me.